Does it not get confusing when the whole family is called Rogelio? No, it actually makes it easier for. Well, how everyone. do you know who's calling who? If you're calling Rogelio coming out the garden, is it your son, <laughs> you, or your dad? Uh, well, by the tone of voice. Rogelio. <laughs> is it? We actually uh, call each other one, two, and three, so. <laughs> you don't. You're making it's that up. It's a fact. It's true. It's a fact. <laughs> OK, you have £5,000. You are three away from 50000 Are you two, then? Two what? Well, is your dad one and your son two? Oh, yes, You're right. two. I am two. <laughs> you got £5,000. Question number five is for 10000 You have all three lifelines. Here it comes. The season of Advent begins on the Sunday closest to which Saints' Day? St Andrew. St. David, St. George, St. Patrick. The season of Advent begins on the Sunday closest to which Saints' Day? St. Andrew, St. David, St. George or St. Patrick? This is worth £10,000. I'm going to call a friend. OK. Brian. Brian? Who's Brian? Why would he know this? Um, well, we go to the same church and he's a minister. He'd know. Good plan. <laughs> we've already had a nun tonight, live from New Zealand. Now we've got the minister. OK, he should know. Hello? Brian? Hi. Hello, it's Chris Tarrant here. Hello. Woo! Hi. Is that one who wants to be a millionaire? Oh, hello, Chris. It's good. Uh, we're fine. It obviously means, well, you know what it means. It means Rogelio Navarez oh. is in the house. I he's, do, yeah. uh, he's doing OK, actually. He's on £5,000. Right. But the first lifeline he's needed, he's playing for 10000 He's stuck on this question. He says okay. you're bound to know it. Oh, he's very optimistic. Well, so, no, he, he said you probably will, he hopes. OK. All right, mate. So, next voice will be uh, the unmistakable voice of Mr Navarez. He will tell you the question. There are four possible answers. Brian, one of these is worth £10,000. Right. OK. OK. Right. Really, lots of luck. Your time Thank starts you. now. The season of Advent begins on the Sunday closest to which saint's day? Saint Andrew, Saint David, Saint George, or Saint Patrick? Okay. Season of Advent begins on the Sunday closest to which saint's day? Andrew, George, David, or Patrick? Which An saint? Andrew. You sure? Well, I'm Scottish. <laughs> Good play. It's worth 10 grand. Want to play it? Yeah, same down. Final answer. Final answer. You just won £10,000. <laughs> From Andrew's Day. Uh, it's the 30th of November, just before Advent starts and everybody opens their little Advent calendars. Right, at this moment, Rogelio has £10,000. He still has those two lifelines. And he's two away from £50,000. We'll take a break. Don't go away. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think I have. In, um, in Mexico, yes. you, you had your own performing arts school over there. That's right. But also you acted a bit yourself, didn't you? That's right. And you were in, I was checking this out uh, earlier in the day, you were in the most successful, huge, Oscar-nominated, box office smash Mexican film of all time. That's right. Called um, Crime of Padre, is that right? Crime of Padre Amaro, yes. And what did you play? What were you? I played uh, Padre. You play the Padre? Not the Padre, but a Padre. So you're very famous. I mean, in Mexico, everybody recognises you, do they? Uh, well, um, wouldn't know if recognised. Well, perhaps. Uh, you see, I uh, came to UK uh, even before it was released. Oh, really? Uh, yes, yes. So you don't know how famous you are? 
I mean, well, you'll be, fam well, you uh, be famous in the UK now after this, but you might be famous at home as well. I follow the stories. Um, it was a big hit. It was also very polemic. Um, and uh, yes, I didn't get to see any of that, unfortunately. You never seen it? Well, uh, uh, I didn't sort of experience any any of that because I oh, was. I see the whole thing I was of, here. Of yes. Oh, what a shame. Okay, right now, serious business. You got ten thousand pounds. Question number six is for twenty thousand. You have two lifelines. Have a look at it. Tell me what you want to do. What is the capital city of North Carolina? Wellington, Raleigh, Nelson, Drake. Now, you have a 50-50, you can ask the audience. It's worth £20,000. I'm going to um, take 50-50 first. OK, see what happens. Computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave Rogelio the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Has that helped at all? Well, at least eliminated the one that I would have gone for. That's good. <laughs> That's good. It's one of those. One of those is worth £20,000. One of those would cost you £9,000. Um, I'm going to ask the audience. OK. Um, it's worth a try. Right, audience, this is the question. There are only two alternatives, but this is the question. What is the capital city of North Carolina? Now, B is Raleigh, C is Nelson. It's one of those two, and it's worth £20,000. All on your keypads, please. All vote now. Interesting. Quite a big majority. 70% say Raleigh, 30% say Nelson. But if they're wrong, you've lost £9,000. They haven't. What would you do? I'm going to go with the audience. Even though you probably genuinely haven't a clue, are we? Have a tiny clue that it could be rally. You want to play? Yeah. Final answer. Final answer. You know, once you commit it, you can't change your mind, don't you? You know, Elvira would be very cross if you didn't get to a million quid. What would she do if you just lost £9,000? What does this mean? <laughs> Okay. You just won £20,000. It's the right answer. <laughs> oh, you're trying to stay calm. You're doing well. You've got, <laughs> listen, you've got 20 grand, but that's your last lifeline. Yeah. But the next question, but, but the next question is worth £50,000. You don't have to play this one. But if you went for it and gave me a right answer, it would be the minimum amount you would go home with would be 50 grand. You would, at that point, be just five away from one million. If you give me a wrong answer here, you lose 19 of the 20,000 pounds you have at this moment. Have a look at it, take as long as you need. You have no lifelines. But this is question number seven, and it's worth 50,000. Here it comes. Which of these people did not die in 1977? Charlie Chaplin. Maria Callas, Nat King Cole, Joan Crawford. What do you think? Who could have not died in 1977? <laughs> Presumably three of them did. Yes. So it's saying which yes. one of those did not die in 77? Which of these people did not die in 1977? Charlie Chaplin, Maria Callas, Nat King Cole, Joan Crawford. One of those is worth £50,000. I'll tell you again, Rahili, you do not have to play this question. What's your instinct? Do you have an inclination? I know most of these people well 
and they could have very well have died during that time. I'm thinking of, you know, uh, when they were still around. Don't know a lot about Nat King Cole. Could be him, 77. His daughter was already sort of making it, and I don't know if he was still around. I'm gonna take the money. Sure? Yes. Final answer. Final answer. Give him a big hand. He goes away with £20,000. <laughs> Happy, good result. £20,000 is a good night. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. OK, what would you go on for? Just out of interest? Not getting cold. Would you be really fed up if it was the right answer? I think um, I'm glad I didn't take the risk because it's because I really, you know, tried to work it out and couldn't. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I don't know the date in which they died. The right answer was Nat King Cole. <laughs> he died in 1965, which means your instincts were absolutely spot on. But he still wins twenty thousand pounds. <laughs> Now, at this moment, we've got ten squeaky clean new contestants. They all applied by phone or text, and they've been practising their waving all evening. <laughs> so let's see if they got the hang of that. It's time to meet them. They are... <laughs> Cathy McDonald Wood from Hampshire. Roy Mackin from West Yorkshire. Judith Wedge from Derbyshire. Jim Cook from Staffordshire. Brian McNulty from Tyne and Weir. Jack Baxter from Lancashire. Simon Flood from West Yorkshire. Robert Turpey from Lanarkshire. Scott Dawson from Staffordshire. And Anne Grace from West Yorkshire. Yeah, very good. Imagine how bad their waving would have been if they hadn't practised. Right, <laughs> fastest finger first. Time to find out which of our top ten will be first to pit their wits against the millionaire computer. As always, got one question. It has four answers, only one correct order. Let's find out who can punch that correct order in in the shortest possible time. No distraction please, in the audience. So they can concentrate. Here comes their first question. Starting in Mexico and working east, put these items of clothing in order of the country with which they are most associated. Killed kimono, mal suit, sombrero. OK, let's have a look. Uh, I don't think Ten got it right at all. Let's see what happened. This is the right order. Uh, sombrero, obviously from Mexico. That's why it started in Mexico. Then coming across uh, to Scotland for the kilt. Mao suit, of course, in China. And then um, the kimono in Japan. So that's the right order. Now, let's find out who got it right and then find out who got it fastest. Let's see how many out of Ten got it right. These got it right. Uh, who was fast? Scott Dawson in 4.51 seconds. What on the man? So, first in the chair tonight, Scott Dawson from Stoke on Trent in Staffordshire. Scott works as a data processor for the Royal Mail. Basically, it's his job to decipher dreadful handwriting on badly written envelopes and try to make sure they end up with the right person. Uh, Still's at home with mum and dad, but he's brought his best mate Stephen along to sit in the supporters' seat this evening. Um, if he does really well on the show, Scott says he'd like to start thinking about buying his own place, but he might also pay for driving lessons for his younger brother, as presently he's the only one in the house that can actually drive, which does mean he always ends up being the family's private taxi driver. <laughs> right, lots to talk about. Uh, as ever, though, a million pounds is up for grabs in exchange for 12 questions, which all have the answers right there on the screen. All Scott has to do is shout them out. There are no trick questions, and there are three lifelines to help. 50-50, phone a friend, and, of course, ask the audience. Right, Scott, lots of luck.